The dynamic range is the ratio between the weakest and the strongest of the returns coming back to the ultrasound probe. When these signals return to the probe, the processing software will apply a value to these where strong reflections are white, weak reflections are black, and medium reflections are some shade of grey in the middle. And the question for the software setup is, how many greys do you want? Graphically, the software running within the ultrasound machine will get a number of packets of energy coming back, which will all have different signal strengths, and there are a number of ways it can resolve these signals into a picture. In its simplest form, it could decide that half the signals coming back at the lowest signal strengths would all be coloured black as pixels on the screen, and the top 50% of signal strengths coming back would all be coloured white on the computer screen. This means that the pixels would only be black or white and would give an incredibly high contrast picture which would be useful for things like vascular scanning where you're just trying to differentiate between the inside and outside of a blood vessel. For a little more sophistication, the machine could decide that a third of the weaker signals will be black, a third of the more medium signals will be grey, and the top third of the stronger signals will all be white. So now we have a computer screen that's displaying exactly the same information, but in a different form, where pixels now have three colours rather than two. This would give you um, less contrast, but a bit more definition of some of the more complex tissues. The highest quality pictures come when the computer the Direct this means that the same blood vessel, such as the carotid artery, or blue when the probe is pointing towards the ear, with the blood now flowing away, one form of artifact to be aware of is Peripheral nerves have a characteristic appearance. Nerve roots, as in the interscalene brachial plexus and the transducer, approaching nerves with the needle out of place. The ultrasonic beam is very thin here. We, if we move away by a small amount in either direction, we will be unable to see the nerve because the beam is so thin. If the needle is approaching out of plane, so here we have an ultrasound picture of the nerve with no... If we angle our beam up towards the shaft of the needle, we can now see the needle, which appears as a white dot in the middle of the screen, but we've now lost sight of... If we move our beam down the shaft of is a double dot which is the bevel of the needle and this until eventually
we get close enough to the nerve so that we can now see the if we go past the nerve we will see both the nerve and the very small dot within the picture for in-plane approaches um, it's much easier to aim picture uh, so here we have the whole length of the needle the tip as an Within plane approaches, the two things that uh, help with this technique. Firstly, firstly, the flatter the needle, uh, the better will be our needle. So the flat approaches give a better view of the needle. Secondly, if we place our target if we deliberately adjust our probe position so that the target nerve is finally when approaching nerve and that side conversely for an in-plane we'll aim for the top and bottom of the nerve rather than aiming again for the centre of the nerve 